Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of the Intellectual Saviors of Wrestling with your hosts, the Master of the Brain Damage, Martin, and the one and only Sam H. And this is the Raw review from the 21st of November, Raw's Fallout from Survivor Series. See, we told you it wouldn't be long before we give you another video. No, we're back already. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I don't know, I suppose in slightly surprising circumstances, we uh, opened up the night with... Goldberg. Yeah, I saw, I saw it coming. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's obviously come out. Obviously talking a bit about the uh, match from Survivor Series against Brock, and uh, it's slightly shocking. Uh, he was sort of like, you know possibly teasing, you know, maybe it's time to uh, hang the boots up and call it a day. And that he should, but no. He uh, he says he's talked it over with his family and that and whatnot and uh, reckons he could have. I, 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 I don't think we'll see it, but um, he reckons he's got another title run in him. Oh, I hope not. And uh, he's also confirmed, incredibly likely, when we're going to be next seeing him yep. in the ring. He is the first person to put his name in the hat. To be an entrant in the Raw Rumble. Yeah. Does that mean he's going to be a Raw guy, though? Because it's going to be 15 each. Like they used to yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. So, yeah, he'll class as one of the Raw guys. Uh, yep, Goldberg's in the Raw Rumble. Yeah. So we'll uh, wait and see what happens at the Rumble with Goldberg. Interesting. <clears throat> yes. And then we had our first match of the night. We had the Raw Tag Team Championships being defended. Yes. You had your WWE World Tag Team <coughs> Champions, the New Day. They were facing off against Cesaro and Shame. Yes. <laughs> well, as they've been dubbed, Cesaro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This was an okay match, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, the New Day is always going to get pops and popularity with the crowd and whatnot. They're uh, they're really good with interacting with the crowds wherever they are. But yeah, yeah, you just sort of felt it was a tiny bit rushed and whatnot. Nothing didn't mix. Say something silly like you know this was sort of like their reward for being the remaining members on Team Raw. He did. He said that. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I, unfortunately, as much as I like the New Day, you, 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 I'm just getting very much in the mindset now, they're not losing the titles until, until after they've broken Demolition's record, so, it just seems a bit like, you know, you, you never see them losing until they've at least broken the record. Well, they might shock you, though, because they got another tag title match next week. And I reckon they're going to keep doing it every week just to put the shot hmm. of can they make it. Yeah, tease it. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately for Cesaro and Sheamus, it was another unsuccessful title match for them. Yep. Right near the end, there was a bit of interference. Big E took a bro kick. Yep. And, and uh, Xavier it... prevented the referee from seeing Kofi tap out. Yep. And then, uh, and just as the referee was trying to get Xavier out of the way, Kofi hit a roll up on Cesaro. Yep. And hit him with the one, two, three. Yep. And uh, I believe Xavier held uh, Sheamus back from uh, breaking up the pin as well. He did. So, New Day, still tag team champions. But we all knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Okay, what do we have next on the list? Next, we had a cruiserweight match, celebrating the cruiserweight division staying on Raw. Oh, great! We had Cedric Alexander, who we haven't seen in a few weeks. Decent cruiserweight against Araya Davari. Oh no, not Davari! <laughs> and yes, he come out, had a bit of a shouting rant at the crowd, and that. 
and shouted in Arabic at, yeah. at Cedric Alexander, and they got on with the match. I mean, this is WWE being creative, that they've given Davari the exact same gimmick as his older brother. Yeah, yeah, not not exactly the smartest of moves. He's but... even got the same attire. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay match. Yeah. I mean, you, you didn't see Davari winning. No, no. After insulting the crowd. Yeah, because they, uh, they were still in Toronto on yeah. Raw. And I do believe Cedric Alexander picked up the win with his finishing move, which is called the Lumbar Check. It most definitely is, so... We will be seeing a lot more of the cruiserweight division in the coming week, so because uh, next week you've got the debut of two o five. Yes, and hopefully we'll see the return of the the mustached Marvel himself. Yes, the, the the British gentleman himself, Jack Gallagher. Oh, <laughs> epic man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, before we get to the next match, we've got to tell them all about the segment before. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. Cut backstage, and Enzo was backstage. He was banging on the men's locker room. He's like, "I'm oh, Cass, Cass. Let me in. Let me in. I'm, I'm naked out here, man. I ain't got no clubs. Let me in." And, that. and he, he was getting nothing, so he, he just started walking around backstage. Stark is naked. Yeah, and he was censored. Yeah, he was walking around. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> and then, and then he, uh, then he ran into the brand Titus O'Neil, and he's <laughs> like, he "Man, put some clothes on. Put your damn clothes on." <laughs> and he also ran into the shining stars. He, he did, <laughs> and and he informed him, "Hey, put me on your poster." You, you, you. <laughs> On your leaflets, you'll, you'll get more customers. <laughs> Just some of the faces people were making at him. Yeah. Oh, and God. then, uh, fortunately, unfortunately for him, he then ran into a ravishing Russian, Lana. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she was blushing a little bit, <laughs> trying to look away. Trying to avoid the certified D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, D. So, yeah, and then very shortly afterwards, Rusev came in, demanded what the hell was going on. <laughs> Why are you naked in front of my wife? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then 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 Cass come along, tried to calm the whole situation down. He was like, "Hey, what's going on here?" <laughs> And then, uh, and then Rusev declared that uh, Enzo had insulted his wife, and he was gonna defend her <laughs> honor. Yeah. So we'd be having Enzo versus Rusev. And strangely enough, Big Cass was the only one not bothered by the fact that Enzo was naked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Obviously, it's someone he's used to. Yeah. Enzo just running around in starkers. Oh man. So yeah, this brought us on to the actual match. Yeah, which was a bit short. Yeah, yeah, it didn't really last all that long. Let's not beat around the bush here. It was a squash match. Yeah, yeah, a few moves in. Then uh, Rusev put in the accolade, and well, that was it. <laughs> yeah, and then Cass ran in the ring, scared him off. So I'm guessing that those two are going to have a match next week. Well, I suppose at least we know Rusev won't be. Uh, won't be uh, going up against Roman again anytime soon. No, that one is well and truly done. So, yeah. And then we had a tag team match next. A uh, tag team. Yeah. And this was for the number one contendership for the tag team titles. Yeah. You had the golden truth. Oh, dear. Well, they've deserved to be in a number one contender match. Nobody knows, but yeah. hey, they were there. <laughs> and they were facing off against Gallows and Anderson. Uh, they need to bring back the old fart retirement home. Put, <laughs> put gold dust in there. Or will they bring Nurse Brooks with them? <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, so uh, yeah, this match was 
right for what it was and that it was okay I, th I thought the golden truth got in a bit too much offense yeah they did a bit because they no one's going to take him seriously as number one contenders or, no. or challenging for the number one contendership. No, 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 no. So, it's all all right. The doctors got the business done. They did. They, 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 they hit the magic shot. The magic shot? Magic killer. Fuck it. Bloody hell. I don't know about the <laughs> No, that was the money shot. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. You. Let's not talk about that gimmick. <laughs> Javi or Bibi? Oh no! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the doctors picked up the victory. They did. They had the magic killer on old dust. Oh, gold dust! <laughs> and get them brought in there and sent him packing. Yeah, and then uh, we had a brief uh, segment backstage with. Uh, Sammy Zayn and uh, Mick Foley. Yeah. And uh, Mick said uh, Sammy could redeem himself for uh, not for <laughs> unfortunately not getting the business done at Survivor Series and he'd be facing Braun Strowman. Well, he said it was punishment for yeah. not bringing the title back to Raw. Ugh, jeez. Which really sort of bothered me a little bit because I thought, okay, you're gonna punish Sammy even though he lost, lost by cheating, cheating. Yeah. and yet all five people who lost the Raw men's match, yeah, well, they didn't get any punishment. Nope. No. No. no one of them even did. got a reward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute. But yeah. So. Uh, Again, unfortunately, this was another crappy angle. Braun, so Braun Strowman just come in, attacked Sammy from behind as he was making his entrance, hit a few moves in on him, and then he tied him up on the on the ropes. And then Mick Foley come out and said, "Look, that's it. The match is done. You, you you've won. He can't defend himself." Yep. S stupid idea for a match. And, I mean, I can see where they're going with it because this is just going to be another thing for them to get Sami Zayn off of Raw. Yeah. Because he will go to SmackDown eventually. Yeah. 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 But it was a bad match. Well, on, on to the next one. God. It keeps on getting better. Well, you had Charlotte come out with Dana Brooke to basically gloat. <laughs> About Raw picking up the victory, but obviously her taking all the credit for it. Yeah. Then she was interrupted by Sasha, and uh, she basically said, "Look, you owe me a rematch. I want it." And Sharon said, yeah, "Yeah, okay, yeah, that's fine. We'll do it next week when we're in my hometown. Yeah. I beat you in your hometown, and now I'm gonna have the satisfaction next week of." Beating you in my hometown. And then for some weird unknown reason, Nia Jax came out. Yeah. And then, decision. Yeah, and then she like looked at Charlotte and said, oh, don't worry, I'm not here for you. And then she looked at Sasha and said, I'm here for you. What, what is she the problem with Sasha? I mean, they didn't have a run-in at the pay-per-view. No. I thought it would have been Becky Lynch who, was, who she was after. Yeah, but uh, okay, logic. Who, who knows? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then she was basically saying that she's overrated, Ooh. and uh, she'd show her who the real boss is. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who's had the title run? Yeah, yeah. Who's won any titles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not you, no. Not <clears throat> you. Yeah. So then it's like a bit heated, and that, and then uh, Bailey. Came into the picture, and they got turned into a tag team match. Yep, the, the whole classic Teddy Long syndrome. And here's the thing: I even said this was going to happen. I said to who I was with at the time, "I bet you during the commercial break they say tag team match." Yeah, that's what it was: Sasha and Bailey versus Charlotte and Nia Jax. Yeah. <clears throat> 
match was okay. I'll be honest with you, I was a bit bored with this one. I looked at my phone a few times. Yeah. Uh, Sasha and Bailey ended up picking up the victory yeah. in this one. So, uh, Bailey hit the win with a Bailey to Bailey. No, no, no. That, that was last. That was a couple of weeks ago. Charlotte tapped out to the bank statement. Yeah, yeah, that's it. In a very predictable manner. Yeah. I'm just hoping that they don't give Sasha the title again. Because we're getting into this awful syndrome of Sasha wins it on Raw and Charlotte wins it back at the pay-per-view. Yeah. It's way too predictable. And it's like... Charlotte, this was a point I made to you not so long ago. Charlotte's been on the main roster for just over a year, year and a couple of months, and she's already a quarter of the way there to catching Rich Ric Flair's title reign. Yeah, she's got four. Yeah, yeah. That's not cool. Trisha got Trish got seven in her whole career. Yeah. It's like Jesus, slow it down a bit with the title changes. Just a tad, yeah. So, before we move on to the next match, though, we sort of had an episode of the highlight reel. Uh oh. Yeah. Right. Chris was there. He had the list with him. Hey. It was all back up together. And he started talking about Survivor Series and that. It's. And said it didn't go how he wanted it to go, and he said, but "You know whose fault it is." Yeah. Then he was quickly interrupted by our universal champion Kevin Owens. Yeah. Things got heated pretty quickly, and uh, well, Kevin was uh, questioned how much of a good friend uh, Chris is to him and whatnot, and things got a tiny bit heated, and then. Uh, and then Chris Dome said, Yeah, well, you want, you want me to tell you whose fault it was we lost last night? Yeah, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Come on, let's, uh, let's do it. Let's say it. And both of them blurred out, Seth Ro- Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. <laughs> Not Seth <several. laughs> Like they did bash him as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roman Reigns' fault we lost. And then they had a great big hug. And team best bucks. Yeah, they trolled us all. Yeah. So and then uh, not long after though, Seth come out said, "Look, that's just ridiculous." <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's happy that Survivor Series is over. Yeah, and that as those two had joined at the hip, he was going to take them both out. Yeah, he didn't even want to be on Team Raw, but he got promised if he went on Team Raw, he'd get a title shot. And after Roman Reigns came out and there was a bit of a two-on-two beatdown. Yeah. I mean, I was dreading. I thought, you know what? It's going to be another tag team match. <laughs> but no, no. Mick Foley came out and went, yep, you are promised the title opportunity. And that match would take place in the main event. Yeah. No DQ. Jericho and Roman banned from ringside. Yeah. So that was our main event. For the night. So, uh, moving on to our next match. Yeah, another Cruiserweight match. Oh, two on one show. Yeah. All right. We had a Cruiserweight match to determine who will be the new number one contender for the Cruiserweight title. Yep. You had the former champion, TJ Perkins. Mega TJ Fee. <laughs> you had Noam Dahl. The, the plastic Scotsman. The Rich Swan. And the question is, can you handle this? <laughs> no one can handle Rich Swan. <laughs> the man's amazing. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was quite a good match. I enjoyed this one. Yeah. Obviously, uh, they they've all got a pretty similar wrestling style, so uh, they complemented one another quite well. Unlike the uh, title match we had at Survivor Series. Yeah, but uh. I think slightly to our surprise, Rich Swan picked up the victory. Yeah. With a rather nasty super kick. Yeah, sort of super kick, more of a spinning kick. Yeah, it was a, it was a weird one, weren't it? 
It was a strange one. I mean, they've sort of really built up TJ Perkins over the last couple of months. <clears throat> and he, well, you like this one. He ate a clean pin. Yeah. Yeah, so that but, was it. One, two, three. Rich Swan is your number one contender. Well, I mean, it's a good thing, though, because I like him to put a bit of unpredictability. Yeah. Cruiserweight should be able, you should be able to say any Cruiserweight can beat any other Cruiserweight. Yeah. Yeah, so you should be able to. And so yeah, that title match apparently is going to be happening on the debut episode of Two Hundred Five Live, mm-hmm. which is next one. Yeah. Yeah. And then we are on to our main event. The main event. Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship in an ODQ match. Oh yeah. I really enjoyed this match. Yep. It was really good. This was a classic hardcore battle. There were tables, there were chairs. Yeah. Uh, they fought in the crowd. Yeah, they did. Which they haven't done in a while. No, I mean, they uh, even had uh, Seth uh, jump off one of the uh, turnstiles entrances. Yeah, it was very reminiscent of uh, the whole Shield v. Evolution match a few years ago where he mm. did that. Yeah. So, yeah, and then uh, and towards the end of the match, when they were uh, just coming back from the uh, audience and that, uh, Kevin was uh, by the ringside, and uh, Seth went to jump up onto the barrier and go to do a leaping attack. And he was held back by Sin Cara. Yeah. That was a very strange one. I wasn't expecting to see him interfere in uh, such a high-profile <laughs> match. And weirdly, he was wearing a Shinsuke Nakamura hoodie. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. <laughs> Cruiserweight wearing a Nakamura hoodie? So, yeah, and then uh, as Seth fell, he grabbed the face of Sin Cara. And the mask came off. And you see, thought, oh, no. They, they're going to reveal his identity. But... Yeah. It wasn't the Sin Cara. No, no it wasn't. It was the keeper of the list of Jericho. Y2J himself. But he was banned. He shouldn't have been at Ringside. <laughs> well, he somehow got around it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jericho at a pedigree again. Yeah, He's had a few of them recently. Yeah, and then unfortunately for Seth, he uh, ate uh, Powerbomb Onto the side of the ring. Yep. And then uh, Kevin quickly chucked him back in the ring, pinned him. One, two, three. I mean, I sort of understand the Jericho interference, but just once I'd like to see Owens retain it by himself. Yeah. I know he's a heel, and heels do heel things, but... Mm. Well, it's it's slowly starting to get to the same area where we were saying about, like, you know, with Charlotte Mm. never picking up a victory on her own when she has the title, you know, either having Ric Flair or Dana Brooke in the fear for her. Well, she's had two clean ones recently, the SummerSlam match and the Hell in a Cell match. Yeah, 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 she's been getting better recently, but, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, this is a similar problem. Yeah. And the main thing I, I thought was Jericho banned from ringside. I thought this was going to be the night where Triple H makes his reappearance. Yeah, because obviously <laughs> they've got to explain the whole why he screwed over Seth. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I mean, well, hell, it was, what, two months ago? He pedigreed him and then just went off. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and eventually they're going to have to bring him out and tell us why. Yeah, so I don't know whether they're whether they're saving it for around WrestleMania time, maybe. Yeah, I think if they're gonna do another title match, Triple H will probably reappear at Roadblock. <laughs> oh, what a terrible name! <laughs> Jeez, Vince's obsession with these road-based pay-per-views. No idea. Man. Roadblock, Fast Lane, yeah. Over the Limit. Oh. We get it, Vince. You like fast cars. <laughs> oh, dear. And that was how they ended the show. Yep. 
Team Buddies, still the Universal Champion. So well, that about wraps things up for Raw. From your hosts, the Master of the Brain Damage, Austin Martin, and the one and only Sam H. This has been the Raw Review, and we will see you again for the next one. Adios.